Okay, in this video, we are gonna talk about when to use dy in integrals. And I'm gonna kind of assume that you know how to find area and volume, like you've seen these concepts before. Um, so let's get started. So basically, there's two different things we're gonna deal with. One of them is area. So there's a couple of times you'd wanna use dy if um, area is involved. So the first one, you might just be told that you have to do that. So in terms of y, um, something like that. And then the second reason that you might want to use dy instead of dx is if the region is horizontally simple. So you might not be totally familiar with that idea. So what that is, is uh, if we draw our region, and then if horizontal lines pass through the region, and as they pass through the region, the left curve and the right curve never switch, then the region is horizontally simple. And it's actually a little easier if a region is horizontally simple to use dy instead of dx. Um, if you look at that region and you're really familiar with finding area in terms of x, uh, it's going to be difficult, right? Because kind of the left side, the top curve and the bottom curve are the same curve. Um, so you'd have to do uh, probably a lot of algebra before you could even do it. So uh, that's if you're dealing with area. Uh, you might be dealing with volume. And for volume, there's two scenarios. So one, uh, you can use dy if you're rotating around a vertical line. So there's another way to do that, but we're not going to deal with that here. So if we're rotating around a vertical line, um, and that includes the y-axis, which is probably the most common vertical line that you would rotate around. Um, and then the second uh, reason or time you would use dy is if the cross sections are perpendicular to the y-axis. Okay, so those are the times you're going to use dy. Um, and there's a key tip that I will give you. So if you're going to use dy, then everything in your integral needs to be in terms of y. So that means the bounds are going to be in terms of y. So uh, those values, the a and b there in your integral, those have to be y values, not x values. And then the functions that you're dealing with also need to be in terms of y. So they're going to kind of look like x is uh, h of y or some kind of function of y. All right, so now we're going to do uh, three examples. And I'm going to kind of mix using calculator and non-calculator on these. Uh, so the first one, we want to find the area of the quadrant one region that's bounded by f of x, which is natural log of x plus one and then plus one, and g of x, which is just three. So let's sketch this region. So we have this, and then there's g of x, there's f of x, and so this is the region that we're dealing with. And um, so what we want to do is we want to find the area. So if we were going to actually use dx for this, uh, we can set it up sort of. So I'm going to generally set it up. So it'd be the integral from uh, x equals zero to, I'm just going to say the x coordinate of the intersection point is b. And I would have to go through and solve for that, um, which if you think about it, is definitely going to be kind of a weird point. There's going to be an e in there and it's not going to look too good. Um, and then it's going to be uh, top take away bottom. So g of x minus uh, f of x, which is fine. Um, but then you run into this problem where you're also gonna to have to integrate uh, f of x, which is the natural log of the quantity x plus one and then plus one. Um, and that would require, if you're doing it by hand, you'd have to use something called integration by parts, which you may or may not know. Um, it's just harder this way. So instead, uh, let's use dy. So to do that, I need to get my bounds in terms of y, I need to get my functions in terms of y. So I'm gonna start off with y equals the natural log of the quantity x plus one plus one. And so I have to solve this for x. So I'm gonna subtract one from both sides. Um, now I have x's inside a natural log, so I need to exponentiate both sides to get x out of that natural log. Um, then I wanna ultimately solve for x. So I'm gonna say x is e to the y minus one and then minus one. So that's the right-hand curve. So I'm gonna end up doing right minus left um, and let me sketch in kind of an example. So there's, there's what I'm dealing with. So I'm gonna do right minus left for that line segment, basically. Um, so the left-hand curve is actually just x equals zero. Um, so that's actually a little easier. So that's our left curve. Um, and now I'm gonna set up the integral. So the integral is gonna be uh, integral from, so the bounds need to be y values. So here you can see the region goes from y equals one to y equals three. So from one to three. And then it's going to be right take away left. So the right curve is e to the y minus 1 minus 1. And then the left-hand curve is pretty nice. It's just 0. And then for this, we're doing dy. So at this point, what you want to do is you want to check and make sure everything is in terms of y. Because if something's not, something's going wrong. 
um, but everything is in terms of y here. So I'm actually gonna integrate this one by hand. The integral of e to the y minus one is just e to the y minus one. Um, and then the integral of uh, negative one is gonna be y because we're dealing with dy. And then the bounds are from one to three. When I plug in three, I get e squared minus three. And then minus the quantity, I'm gonna get e to the zero and then minus one. And if you think about it, e to the zero is one, so that's one minus one. So those are gonna cancel. So the final answer here is just e squared minus three. And that integral was not bad. And that's a really good example of where you'd wanna use dy instead of dx because it just made everything significantly easier. Let's take a look at another one. So we're gonna find the volume of the solid form by rotating the quadrant one region bounded by f of x is the square root of x minus one and g of x is x minus three. So again, we wanna start with a picture. Um, so here is my square root, there's my line. They intersect at the point five two. Um, I'm just gonna like jump through how to find that uh, in case you wanna see. Uh, you set them equal, you square both sides, you move everything to one side, you factor and solve. And then that x equals two is an extraneous solution, so you throw that out. Um, and x equals five is the one that you're looking for. So the ordered pair is five, two. Um, so what we wanna do is we wanna use dy for this because we're going around a vertical line. So um, we're gonna use dy, kind of a classic setup for this. And so I need to get my functions in terms of y. So I'm gonna start with y equals square root of x minus one. Square both sides and add one, gives me y squared plus one is equal to x. And then my other function, is y equals x minus three. So I'm gonna add three to both sides and I get x equals y plus three. So it's usually not super difficult to solve the functions um, for x. Um, and it's something that you just definitely need to do. So here's what we're doing now. Um, we have a big radius and a small radius. And so the big radius involves the y plus three and the small radius involves the y squared plus one. So our integral, it's volume, so it's gonna be pi the integral from, so I need y values now because I'm gonna be using dy. So I go from there to there, so the bounds are zero to two. And then it's gonna be uh, the big radius, which is uh, kind of like a right takeaway left, so it's the quantity y plus three minus zero, but that's just y plus three. Big radius squared, and then minus um, the little radius, which is uh, right takeaway left again, so y squared plus one, and then minus zero. So the little radius is y squared plus one, but I need to square that. And then all of this is dy, so I wanna take a second and check and make sure everything is in terms of y, so I didn't screw up. Um, and then I just grabbed a calculator to do this one. So uh, that equals 284 pi over 15. You could definitely do it by hand, it just didn't seem worth it in the video. Uh, let's take a look at one more example. So the region bounded by f of x equals e to the x plus two minus one and g of x equals uh, the natural log of three minus x and then plus four. Uh, and the x-axis is the base of a solid whose cross sections perpendicular to the y-axis um, are semicircles and we wanna find the volume. So this I think is a problem where you'd be given the graph. Um, but as soon as you see perpendicular to y-axis, you know, use dy. Um, so here's the graph I'm gonna give you. I'm also gonna give you the intersection point because I think those would be provided. Um, so we have this, the exponential is kind of on the left, the natural log is on the right. Uh, the intersection point is given to you. And so what we wanna do is we need to uh, switch up our functions, right? Because they're in terms of x right now. So uh, we're gonna do that right there is kind of the, the, that's actually the diameter of the semicircle. So when you're doing a semicircle, uh, it's gonna be the pi over eight, the integral of, I call this thing s, so s of y. So it's gonna be pi over eight, the integral of s of y squared. Um, and then we need the bounds correct. And I think it's definitely worth memorizing that semicircles are pi over eight s squared. So let's rewrite our function. So we have y equals e to the x plus two minus one, add one to both sides. Uh, we gotta get that exponent down. So we're gonna take natural logs. Natural log y plus one is x plus two, subtract two from both sides. So we get this. And then if you look at the figure, the exponential was on the left, so this is our left curve. And uh, we'll do the same thing for the other curve. So y is natural log of three minus x plus four, subtract four. 
Now in this case, we need to get the x out of a natural log, so we're gonna exponentiate. So e to the y minus four is three minus x. Um, and then I'm gonna I don't know, add x to both sides and subtract the exponential and I get x is three minus e to the y minus four. If you look at the figure, this is definitely the right-hand curve. And then s of y, uh, the thing we're trying to find, is gonna be right minus left, so that's gonna look like this. So what I do is I define that on my calculator, and I'll show you on another slide how that looks, but our integral becomes uh, pi over eight because that's always there for semicircles. The integral, I need the y bounds in this case, so it's from here to here, so it's gonna be zero to uh, the y coordinate there, which is 5.15761. You wanna use as many decimals as you can. In fact, on your calculator, you just wanna store that value, and then it's gonna be s of y and squared and that'll be dy. Calculator tells me that's approximately 23.786. And let's take a look at what the calculator looked like. So I had stored s of y. I actually had stored b as the y coordinate of that intersection point, and then I just punched that into my calculator. Uh, so to kind of summarize, if you're gonna use dy, uh, the reasons you'd wanna use it, it might be easier, in which case definitely do it. Uh, you might be told you have to, uh, if you're going around a vertical line, although there is another method, we don't really know it yet if you're in my class, and uh, if you're dealing with cross sections perpendicular to the y-axis. And then at the end of setting it up, you always need to check that everything is in terms of y because that's the number one mistake that uh, people make is they tend to use x values instead of y values. Um, so that means your bounds and your curves need to be in terms of y. All right. So uh, those are a bunch of examples of when you'd want to use dy in an integral. I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.